It's time. Time to set up slash commands on our bot. And I'm going to show you how you can do it. Hi friends, it's James and welcome or welcome back to my channel. So today in this video, we're going to be progressing with our bot. We're going to be adding slash commands. And this is a really important video. And you'll see why in a second if you don't already know. Just before I carry on, I just want to say one classic YouTuber thing. 95% of you aren't subscribed to watch my videos. And if you're currently watching this video and you're not subscribed, please do consider. It's completely free, it doesn't cost you anything, and it helps me out so much. We're so close to hitting a thousand subscribers, and I'd love to hit it before March, so please help me out. But anyway, so why are slash commands so important? That's the first question. Well, so, in April 2022, Discord has announced that normal bot commands like doing a prefix and then hello will no longer work and what's being replaced with that well slash commands that is how you're going to be interacting with your bot from that date forward so this sort of command like this where you do a prefix and then your command will no longer work past april 2022 and that's why we need to get our bots over to using slash commands and well that's what this video is. This video is a complete guide on how we can set up slash commands on your bot. So let's get started with the code. So the first thing that we need to do is we actually need to import a certain package to allow us to use slash commands from Nextcord. And if you haven't seen my video when we set up Nextcord, check on the card in the top right or the link in the description and it will show you how to set up Nextcord. And we're going to be using Nextcord as our package for creating our bot. So as I just said, we need to import a package that will allow us to utilize slash commands to so set up slash commands with our bot. So to do this, we do this. We need to do from next chord import and an interaction. That's the only thing that we need to import. And you'll see why we need interaction in a second. So now we're now moving on to the fun bit. We're now actually going to start actually creating a slash command. And really, it's just as simple as this. All we need to do is import something and then write a little bit of code here. And voila, we've got slash command set up on our bot. So let me show you. How do we set up a slash command? Well, we're defining it like we do up here, but it's kind of slightly different. So we're going to do at client dot slash underscore command open brackets. So now... I need to explain something that will make a bit of sense about what's going to happen next. So inside of this brackets here, we're going to put something. We're going to type guild underscore IDs is equal to and then testing server ID. And let me explain what this is. And let me explain why we need this and why you won't need it. You'll see why in a second what I mean. So when we set up slash commands, if we weren't to have this guild underscore ID testing server ID, if we won't have to have this there, it was literally just like this. When we submit, when we start running our bot, it will take about an hour for Discord to register that we've actually got some commands in our bot. So our bot won't actually work for the first hour. And while this is really annoying when developing because you're going to be continuously changing your code and rerunning your code. And while if you have to wait an hour to view your commands in action, well, that's just not ideal at all. And that's why we're going to put this guild IDs is equal to testing server ID. And what this is doing is basically is think of it like we're only allowing our bot to work in a certain server, a certain server in where we're going to be testing our bot out. I hope that makes sense in what I'm saying. So let me just do a very quick summary of what I said. So when we publish our bot as its final thing, so anyone can use it, we're going to be removing this guild IDs test server ID. Because we don't need that, because we don't want to have to specify this each server's ID inside of this array. In a second, we'll put in our test server ID and I'll show you how you do that. So, but as we're developing the bot now, we don't want to have to wait that hour each time, or roughly an hour. So we're going to set, we're going to basically say all our commands will work inside of our specific server. And that means our bot won't work on any other server because we're specifying the server in which the commands work. I hope that makes sense here. And so when you finish your bot, when you finish making it and you want to publish it to the world, you're going to go through and remove all of these guild IDs is equal to test serving ID because we don't want that. We want our bot to be able to work with any server. So this is basically limiting our bot to just one specific server. Hope that makes sense. So let's define test server ID. So up here we're going to create a variable called testing, test, sorry, test server ID. Exactly the same as what we've got defined here. 
And now we need to set it equal to the ID of the server that we want to be testing. So how do we find out this ID? So let me show you. So when you've opened Discord, the first thing you want to do is come down to the settings here, scroll down and click on advanced. Here you want to turn on developer mode. And once you've done that, you want to go to the server that you're going to be testing your bot out. When you're in that server, you're going to right click on the server here and go ahead and click copy ID. When you've done that, head back to VS Code or whatever IDE you're using to write your code. And next to this testing server ID, paste in that ID. See, this is the ID of that server, my testing server that I use for bot development. And you want to do the same. So there we go, we've now set up our testing server ID. So our, this command that we're about to write is only going to work on this test server. So now let's finish writing the rest of this command because it's slightly different to how we used to do it. So, well, the next step is kind of similar. So you want to define it. So async, then def, and then we want to give it a name. So I'm just going to give it a name. Let's just call it test. Then we're going to open it. And normally now we would do something like, like maybe something like importing CTX and then other stuff as well. However, we don't use CTX anymore with slash commands. Think of it now as forgotten. You're no longer going to use it. What we're going to use instead is interaction. So this is the thing that we imported up here. So to do this, we're going to do interaction is colon to interaction. The thing that we imported up here, make sure that it's the same and that it's got a capital which relates to the capital up here. And something I just realized I need to make sure I point out that is utterly vital. The name of this here can't have any capitals in it. No capitals whatsoever, otherwise you'll get loads of errors. The name of this command cannot have any capitals because you will get errors, so keep that in mind. So this interaction that we've just set up, think of it like CTX, the way we interact with our bot. How we can take input from a user and send it back. So think of it just like CTX, but in this case it's interaction. They're basically the same thing. And now we're going to well, let's just send a message back. Let's just send the message test back. So how would we do that? So we're going to do await an interaction dot response dot send underscore message. And then we can define the message. And let's just say, hello, subscribe, please. There we go. That is it. That's all we need to set up our slash command, a slash command. And so yeah, make sure your interaction is the same as this interaction, so lowercase i, and then response.sends message will be how we send a message back. If you've just come from Discord PY, this will be slightly different to how we've done it before. However, you'll catch on really easily, and I'll show you everything that you do to need to fully integrate from Discord PY's terminology over to next chords. So let's run it now. Let's see it in action. So we can save it and run it, and let's head to Discord. Okay, so inside of Discord here, I'm going to come here. So now if we type slash, look at this. You can see our bot has now appeared in the side. YouTube bot. So what happens if we click it? You can see here, our command test has appeared. So let's say if we type test, then we click enter. Ta-da! Hello, subscribe please. It worked. We've just set up a slash command. That is so cool. We've now successfully set up slash commands. And that's how you do it. It's as simple as that. But that... That's only the bare minimum of slash commands. We can do so much more. So let me show you. We can actually give a proper name and description to our slash command. So how do we do this? Well, we come to our slash command here. And if we type name is equal to speech marks, comma, and then description is equal to two speech marks again. So now we can put stuff inside of this to set a name and description for this command. So this is the test command, so we're going to get a name, test, and the description is introduction to slash commands. So let's run this, and let me show you what this does. Sorry, one thing that I just need to repoint really out is, is the name of this command can't have a capital, all has to be lowercase, otherwise it will error out. So let's head to Discord again, and let me show you what this does. So we're inside of Discord here, and if we do slash command again, and we come over to our bot, we can see we've got the command test, and with a description of introduction to slash commands. This is so cool because we can now actually define what our commands do inside of Discord. So if anyone who's installed your bot doesn't know what a certain command does, well, you can give it a description of that command so they know what each command does. And, that is, it, and I'm really happy that this is a feature inside of Discord. So we can now actually specify what each of our commands 
do. I'd highly recommend you give each command in your bot a description of what it does. It will just help people understand what it does. And honestly, you, you just have to set this up. So yes, just to reiterate, make sure this is not a capital. It has to be lowercase just because of the way of how slash commands work. And well, that's everything to do with slash commands. That is how we set up and use slash commands for your Discord bot. Honestly, it is just so cool, the capability and uses of slash commands. So what is what have I got in store next for this series? Well then, we're going to be going through and just converting all of our cogs to slash commands and just going over the basic new next chord syntax, how it works and what's slightly different in next chord from Discord PY. So if you're someone who's just converted your bot from Discord PY to next chord and you realize, oh wait, some of my commands aren't actually working. Well, that's because the syntax that next chord uses might be slightly different from Discord PY. So the next video, think of it just like a syntax update. So I'm going to be showing you all the new syntaxes that you need to know for next chord. And so that will get your bot fully back up and running just how it was with Discord PY but with slash commands then so stay tuned for that but you know what else I've got coming I've got buttons I've got drop downs I've got so much more that you don't even know exists that's going to be coming out so it's just stay tuned for that if you've enjoyed it please do consider giving it a like because you know it just boosts it so much in the algorithm and honestly it makes a difference you don't know how much difference just your single like on a video can make so please please do consider giving one anyway I'll catch you all in the next video. See ya.